Hi there, this is the uh, book talk tutorial for my newest book called The Clever Wife. This is based on a Kyrgyz folktale. Now Kyrgyz, um, that area is from Central Asia. There's a place called Kyrgyzstan and there they speak Kyrgyz and they also speak Russian. It once was part of the Soviet Union but now it's an independent state. Now this story was the first story that I learned how to speak tell as a storyteller and I kind of chose it for a silly reason it's because um, the ruler of this uh, kind of a kingdom in Kyrgyzstan he's called a Khan and it's spelled like my last name Khan Khan actually means kind of a ruler but honestly the story is just beautiful it's a beautiful story it's like a Cinderella story only in this case what happens is both the prince and the Cinderella they are both they were both poor at one point now but the thing of the thing about this story this folktale that really sets it apart is that it it has um, a deeper meaning to it it's got it's got uh, outside the box thinking like it's kind of hard to find stories that really uh, encourage you to think outside the box but this is definitely one of them that does that now what happens in it, it start the story starts with the old Khan Saribe. Now Saribe is the Khan, the king, the king of the thing, but he doesn't have any children. He never got married. So when he, he's getting ready to die, he gathers the people and he tells them, and they said, oh, choose somebody for us to be the next Khan. They're worried about succession. So Saribe says, no, you just choose for yourself. And then he finally says, okay, my pet falcon, it will choose for you. On the, when I'm gone, let it, let it, up, let it free and it will land on the shoulder of your next con. Now, when that happens, everybody's gathered there, but when that happens, the person it lands on ten, ends up being Balotbeck, this young shepherd boy. And some of the older people and the richer people, they say, what, a poor shepherd boy is going to be our con? But then they say, no, let's give him a chance. He turns out to be an excellent leader. He's just wise and he's just kind and he rules with justice and everything is great for a while. But then the people get worried because he doesn't get married. And they say, you know, we want you to get married so that they're, they're, for the next heir, you can provide an heir. So he says, okay, fine. I will choose the, the, the maiden who can answer three questions. Now this is where it gets really interesting. The questions that he answers are kind of impossible questions. You, you, they don't really have an answer. So this is where the thinking outside the box comes in. Because really what he's looking for is who can provide um, an answer to something that really isn't answerable. And the first question is what is the distance between the East and the West? And the second question is what is the distance between the Earth and the sky? And the third question is, what is the distance between truth and falsehood? Now, those are such interesting questions. So all these maidens, they gather, these high-born maidens, they gather to try to answer the questions, and none of them can come up with a good answer. And then one day, like, uh, like for two days, they go back and forth from the inn that they're staying in. And then on the third day, this girl, her name is Donishman, which means the wise one. She is the clever wife from the title. So she sees these high-born maidens going back and forth from the inn to the Khan's palace. So she asks them one day, and on the third day, and, they, and then one of them, some of them laugh at her, but one of them is kind and tells her what's going on. So she says, can I try? And some of them say, oh, why are you coming? Why are you coming? Uh, but the kind one says, yeah, you can come. So when Balatbek answers the question, asks the questions again, she provides three cr incredible answers. And they're so wise, they're so beautiful, that Balatbek says to her that I will marry you. Now, so they get married, and I love the pictures. The pictures are just gorgeous. There's Donishman telling him the answers. And these are the other maidens, the high-born high ones. And look at the way, look at the expression on their faces. I should mention that the illustrations are done by an artist named Aisha Gamiet. Oh, 
She is incredible. She actually went to Turkey for a number of years and she studied under a master to become an Islamic um, uh, uh, illuminist, illuminate, illumination artist. She really knows Islamic a style of drawing. In fact, she uh, studied under in the in Prince Charles. He's a patron of the traditional arts in England, but she lives in England, and he has a school for traditional arts. And first, she she studied there. Then she started teaching courses on this miniature design. Ah. Oh, She's amazing. She even did the frontispieces for a couple of books um, of Rumi, like poetry, the Rumi poetry for the Queen. She is that good. So she did the illustrations for here, and they are charming. They are absolutely beautiful. I think it's kind of hard to say this because I love all of my books, but I actually think that The, the Clever Wife might be the most beautiful book that I have. <laughs> um, it's gorgeous. Okay, so so they get married, and on, on the evening of their wedding, Balatbek says to Donishman, he says, there's one condition, that you cannot share your wisdom with any other man. Well, you know what's gonna happen. Um, there, a, a man comes to her, to Queen Donishman. He has to face Balatbek the next day to be judged for a crime. And the, cr the punishment for the crime is death. So he comes to, in desperation, he comes to Queen Donishman and he says, can you tell me what should I say to avert the punishment? And she says, I can't tell you. I promised I wouldn't share my wisdom. And he goes, but I'm going to die. So she says, okay, when you go before Balatbek, say this and then he will not be able to apply the punishment of death. But don't tell him I told you. Well, you know it's going to happen. And the thing is, even then, it almost ends in disaster, but for the cleverness of Donishman. She thinks outside the box, and she, what she does is she addresses the real issue underlying that demand. Okay, Balatbek says, don't share your wisdom with any other person. What he's really saying outside the box, uh, this is all engaging critical thinking skills. And you could probably try to do this with your students. Try to get try to get underneath what he's really saying. What does he really want? He wants loyalty. He wants her to be loyal. Now by telling that man what to say, she was not being disloyal to him. She was just helping him out. So what she does is she shows him beautifully that she she is still loyal. Okay, she is still loyal. She thinks outside the box. Oh, it's just such a beautiful story. I am so proud of the way that it came out. And at this time, I must say, this is this is 2022. This is when the book is, has been launched. And I do believe that sometimes books land at the exact time that people need them. We are coming out of the pandemic. And I fear for the children who have had, and for their parents too, quite frankly, who've had an incredible couple of years of hardship and difficulty. Many of them, they need a happy ending. They need folk tales. We need to return to folk tales because they provide such insight into human nature. And they have a happy ending. They give us hope. They give children hope. And Einstein said, if you want your children to be smart, read to them. If you want them to be brilliant, read them folk tales and fairy tales. I mean, this is what Einstein said. Okay, I'm paraphrasing. It might not be those exact words, but he did say that. Okay, so let's get some get some folk tales back into the hands of our children and the next generation to give them hope. Thank you for watching.